Hey everyone, welcome to the next video for section 7.8. So in this video, we're going to go to do the phase portraits for these repeated eigenvalue cases. So last video, we went through the general solutions, how you find them, where they come about, that sort of thing. In this video, we're going to go and look at the phase portraits for them and draw some pictures of you know what these sort of things look like. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so before we get started with the phase portrait stuff, I want to draw our attention to one thing we had in the notes from last time. So Last time we were trying to solve for vectors and we came to these two equations here for C and A, these two random vectors that we're going to show up in our general solution for the repeated eigenvalue case. So I'm going to rewrite those solutions a little bit differently and talk about what they sort of mean in terms of the vectors themselves. So the first of those equations said that 3xc equals axc, and I'm going to rewrite that as axc minus 3xc equals 0. And this told us that C was an eigenvector of eigenvalue 3. Now the second equation there said that A times eta minus 3 eta equaled C. Not 0, but C. Where these two had to be the same vector, where this guy was this vector from up here. So since it's not zero, but it is, it gives me an eigenvector is what it does. So if I take a eta minus three eta, I don't get zero, but I get an eigenvector. So we, the term used for these guys is that eta is a quote generalized eigenvector of a with eigenvalue three. They don't need to know very much about that at all, but they'll use it in the book when they're talking about this stuff. So I want to make sure I've at least said the terminology at least once before things get way confusing. This is the sort of really, really theoretical part of, theoretical linear algebra part of this class. And it's really annoying to have to, you know, deal with it. But we're going to avoid it. And we're just going to solve the equations directly and let that give us our vectors instead of dealing with this generalized eigenvector stuff. If you want to talk more about it, we can talk about it whenever you want. But that's what we're going to do for this class. All right, so phase portraits. So I'm just going to use for these the two examples we did in the last video where we had the case with enough eigenvectors and the case without enough eigenvectors. So case one, which was A is the matrix 3, 0, 0, 3, which is where we had enough eigenvectors. Our general solution was x of t is c1, 1, 0, e to the 3t plus c2, 0, 1, e to the 3t. And I can rewrite this just by combining stuff together as C1, C2 times e to the 3t. Now what we see that this says, this says that wherever I start, whatever C1 and C2 I put in, I then continue on in a straight line through the origin, either going back to the origin as t goes to minus infinity, or going away from the origin as t goes to plus infinity, no matter where I started. So if I look at my picture here, if I start here, so this is my C1, C2. Well, what happens? As t gets bigger, I'm taking the C1, C2 vector and just multiplying it by a bigger and bigger number. So as t goes on, I'm going straight away from the origin. And as t goes to minus infinity, I'm going to go straight into the origin. So I'm going this way as time goes on. And it does not matter where I start. I do the exact same thing. So this way, I get a solution here. This way, I get one here. This way, I get one here. It does not matter what I do. I'm always going away in a straight line from the origin, no matter where I start or what I'm doing. And I'm going away because this 3, this coefficient of the e, the exponent of the e, is positive. So I'm going away from the origin as time goes on. If it were negative, I would have everything flowing in towards the origin, all in straight lines. So this is what's called a proper node. In this case, it's a proper source, because everything is flowing out of it. So when I have enough eigenvectors, I get everything just as, as a star point, it's a proper node, whatever word you want to use for that, everything's either flowing out in a straight line away from it or in a straight line towards it. That's what I get in the case of when I have enough eigenvectors. Now let's look at case two. Case two, this was our matrix 3, 1, 0, 3, where we did not have enough eigenvectors, and our general solution was x of t equals c1 times 1, 0, e to the 3t, plus c2 times 1, 0, t, e to the 3t, plus 0, 1, e to the 3t. So let's start drawing our face portrait here. So I know one solution that's very easy to draw, and that's if I set c2 to be 0. If c2 is 0, I am somewhere on the, I'm somewhere on the line here, 
and I'm just going away from the origin as t goes to plus infinity. So this solution is just going straight this way. And here, depending if, if c1 is positive, I start here. If c1 is negative, I start here. And I just go in a straight line staying on the axis away from the origin. These curves are c2 equals 0. This is what I get for there. Now, to, to figure out what actually happens to the rest of them, I want to draw in what happens if c1 is 0 and c2 equals 1. So I want to draw out what this function looks like. Now, in order to graph this guy, I'm going to rewrite him in a little more suggestive way. So I'm going to write this guy, I'm going to pull out e to the 3t. So this guy is the same as e to the 3t times the vector t1, right? If I pull out e to the 3t, this is what I get, because I end up with a t0 in the first column and a 0, 1 in the second. So I put them together and I get a t1. So now let's see what happens if I plug in different times. So at t equals 0, I am at 0, 1. At t equals 1, I am at 1, 1 times e to the 3. And at t equals minus 1, I am at minus 1, 1, e to the minus 3. So what's going to happen here? Well, at t equals 0, I'm at 0, 1, so I'm here. At t equals 1, I'm at 1, 1, but I'm further out, so I'm somewhere up here. And at t equals minus 1, I'm at minus 1, 1, but I've come in closer. So I'm here somewhere. And as t goes to infinity, as t goes to minus infinity, I'm going to approach in zero. I'm going to get to zero. And as t goes to infinity, I'm going to run away to infinity because e is positive. Now what's going to happen here is it's going to come in like this, come through here. It's going to bend around and come into zero along this line. Why along that line? Because along that line, I have a t e to the t as opposed to just an e to the t. And that goes zero. It's going to go to zero slower because t is going to infinity. So because, let me write this down, so it's tangent to x2 equals 0 because t e to the 3t goes to 0 slower than e to the 3t as t goes to minus infinity because it's multiplied by something big. So it's going to go to 0 slightly slower than that. So we get a little hook sort of pattern in here and this function goes away. Now I can draw in some other curves that look sort of like that to fill in the gaps. Something like, you know, if I'm here, I go here and I come off this way a little steeper. Or maybe I'm out here and I go off this way. Now for this one, as t goes to plus infinity, you're going off at random angles. The angles aren't necessarily predictable. So you're going to get a whole scattering here of different angles to approach. And on the opposite side, you'll do the same thing, just in the other direction. And so the reason I knew which, was, which way it was going to go there is because I plotted one of the curves that I knew that I could use. And I used my other general solution here term to give me that green curve to give me a basis for what to start with. So this guy is what's called an improper node. And again, just like the um, spiral points, you're going to be doing a lot of guessing as to where things actually go. But if you can get the direction of the curves and the sort of which way it's going to bend as it comes into the center point, those are the important things you can get out of this sort of face portrait diagram here. Now to this one here is a node, an improper node source. You can have an improper node sink as well if your eigenvalue is negative. You would have all these curves going into zero instead of coming out of zero. All right, that's the point here. Just want to hit the face portraits and sort of outline how all this stuff works. Um, you have your proper nodes and improper nodes. Um, so the next video for this section is just going to be an example working out the whole thing from scratch with the eigenvalues, the eigenvectors, and solving for the general solution that way. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.